Hi everyone, Joe for jazbeescasebreaks.com here on a Tuesday coming at you with a blast from the past. Look at that, 1992 Bowman Baseball. Uh, one box, break number one. And one spot gets you two random packs. It's pretty crazy stuff. This is BBCE sealed, ladies and gentlemen. So first of all, actually first off, big thanks to this group of people right here for getting in on the action. I appreciate it. One spot gets you two packs, so let's double you up. So there's everybody right there, and we're going to go through 1 through 36. Now first, we're going to have to select a box. We've got two boxes of this, and then we'll label all the packs, and then we'll randomize names, randomize packs, and see who gets what. So there's Bowman right there, and there is the baseball card exchange sticker right there. So from my understanding, back in the day, these just came without any sort of packaging around it. So you open up the case, it's just these boxes without any shrink wrap or not even like a little sticker attached to it. So this company kind of takes care of that and lets you know, hey, this hasn't been monkeyed around with. This is good to go. All right. So now let's select a die. Let's, ooh, I've got all the threes in Yahtzee. All right, so one, two, three for the top box, four, five, six for the bottom box. And it's five. One, two, three, four, five, six. So we'll save this. We'll save that for break two, which is already on the site. We can run this back pretty quickly. All right, so now let's open this box up. All right, they both have the, both have the uh, official stuff right here. Let's open this up. Let's see what we can find. Now, as you saw in the item description, what we're going to chase is uh, Mike Piazza, Carlos Delgado, Manny Ramirez, Mariano Rivera, uh, rookie cards. Picture cards. Gold foil on that. And we're looking for engraved foil special cards. No, no, no ball player on the front of these packs. I would love to find a PSA 10. Wow, out of here like Mike Piazza, rookie card. There's the first. Now, if you're watching the replay of this, it's you can a, you can fast forward through this part. It's such obviously. a perfect card. They they created a new grading system. Wow. PSA 11. Like the rainbow label. Uh, Ron, I don't think all cards shipped in Legacy. I'm pretty sure it didn't. Does it? I don't, I don't remember. So long ago. This was a couple years ago. All right. Once again, if you're watching the replay on this video, you can fast forward through this part. If you're watching live, you just have to watch me label all of these packs here. Why would I label them? How else are we supposed to do a random pack break? Jason, you have a better idea? Hmm. 
I'm not sure how else we would do a random pack break unless Jason has a better idea. All right, so let's flip over here. There's all 36 names here, and there's all 36 pack numbers right here. Let's do it. Let's roll it. Let's randomize names and pack numbers eight times, six into two. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eighth and final time. After eight, we got Joshua down to Joshua. All right, six and a two, eight times for the pack numbers. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eighth and final time. After eight, we got pack 28 down to four. Now, just because there's so many packs, the, probably the easiest way to probably do this, and I apologize to the people beforehand, but the, probably the easiest way to do this is probably alphabetically. So from 28 down to 4, after 8 times, there's 28 down to 4. So here's how it shakes out. Josh with pack 28, John with 32, Josh with 18, 26, 34, 16, and 30. Spiro with 7, Josh with 21, Matthew with 13, Gordon with 36, Joshua with 15 and 20. Spear with 10, Justin with 8, Jeremy with 2, Justin with 17, Josh with 19 and 12, Jeremy with 14, Joshua with uh, 25, Gordon with 23, Joshua with 33 and 35, John with 3, Josh with 9, Matthew with 1, Gordon with 6, Jake with 5, Jeremy with 27, Jake with 31, there are a lot of J's here, Joshua with 24, Jeremy with 22, Joshua with 11, Gordon with 29, and Joshua Edlitz with pack number 4. All right, and now let's sort by column A by your first names. And then you can see Josh with pack number four right there, like I said. So once again here, different look right here. Gordon, there's your block of packs. Jake, Jeremy, John. Joshua has a ton of packs right here. Justin, Matthew, and Spiro. And you know what, Josh? I think just for just to make this a little bit easier for us, I think we're just going to do all of your packs last. So we'll do this group first, this group second, and then Josh, you have the most packs. We're going to do all of yours at the end just so we can we don't mix anything up. All right, so now again, you can fast forward through this part if you're watching live. I'm going to print out the labels here with your names and pack numbers attached to it. So stand by, we'll just run this live. Right, so today is Tuesday 6, it's June already. It's the first of the month. You got the sounds of the Celtics in Brooklyn right now. Nets up 46-42. Nets with a solid 3-1 lead. So here we go. So where's the beginning of the list right here? So G for Gordon. Good luck, Gordon. He's got a wide range of pack numbers here, 36 and 6, 23 and 29. So 36 is right here. 6 should be over here. should be over here. And 29 is right there. 
36, 6, 23, 29. 36, 6, 23, 29. Gordon, good luck. For most of you, this should be a blast from the past. These are front side over right there. All right. These are all front and back, kind of stuck together. Look at that look right there. There's the gold. There's Chad McConnell. Pittsburgh. There's Dave Rigetti. And Mark Newfeld in the back right there, sir. I'm try to be careful with these cards here. There's Bill Swift. We'll top load the gold ones. Bill Swift, gold. Oh, this was from the first pack. All right. All right, so there's another pack. Pack 23 for Gordon. Is Chipper Jones a rookie in this? Tim Belcher, there's Tim Belcher. Nothing too crazy so far. You saw one in pack two? Jones, look at him. Is that rookie Trevor Jones though? I guess it would be. Nice. Yeah. Nice Trevor Jones. 
That's how people dressed back then. Alright, and the final pack. Look at Troy Perzel right here. Remember how, uh, who were the other A's that were supposed to be incredible in that rotation back in the day? Todd Van Poppel was one of them. here. All right. Gordon, thank you. There you go. Next is Jake with a couple packs. Jeremy, you're up next. So this, I mean, this is going to take a while, folks. So just thanks for hanging, being patient with us. We'll get to you as quickly as possible. So for Jake Johnson, 5 and 31. There's 5 and 31 right there. Ryan Klesko. Be careful with these cards, too. Wasn't, wasn't Anthony Young one of the first guys to lose 20 games? Does that sound familiar to anybody? Or part of a small club of guys that have lost 20 games? There's Matt Williams. Which is an interesting stat because that means you're actually good enough to pitch late enough into games where you'd get a decision made. I don't know. Maybe it was not just wasn't very good. Kevin Brown. David Cohn. Nolan Ryan, Dickie Thon. And pack 31 for Jake. There's Barry Bonds. Early days. Doesn't, I think Ashby has like a son or a nephew working his way through the, uh, the major league ranks. All right, nice Barry Bonds. What's that? Oh, yeah, dig in. Dig in, you guys. There's all sorts of pizza in there. 
they're gonna open up to make a salad. And they're like, no. All right, so there's John right there. So Jeremy, you've got a number of packs here. Two and 14, 27 and 22. Here's two. There's 14, 27 and 22. 27, oh, 27 is down here. 27 and 22. 30 goes right there. All right. Two, 14, 27, 22. Two, 14, 27, and 22. Raphael Belliard. There's the X. Tino. Pedro Guerrero. And nice. That's a Manny Ramirez with the gold foil. He's a rookie in this set. Nice, Jeremy Taylor. Got a Manny Ramirez. Gold foil going your way. Jonah is saying that's a case hit. Is it? I'm not very familiar with 1992 Bowman baseball. Klesko back there, too. Nice. Oh, Jonah's joking. All right. Yeah, I don't know if they had traditional case hits like that back in the day. Maybe they did. I don't know. Some sets, maybe. Next pack. Got to be careful with these packs here. Boomer, David Wells. There's Rick Helling. Gold. There's Jay Howell, old daughter Jay Howell. Doc, Doc Gooden, Willie Randolph. That's pretty cool. There's Deion Sanders right here. Neon Deion Sanders. All right, and the final pack for Jeremy. Good luck. Got 
Greg Swindell. Hojo. Remember, uh, I'm sure everyone had some clever, clever nicknames for him in their childhood. Nice Eric Karos. Walt Weiss and Sid Bream. All right, Jeremy Taylor, thank you very much for grabbing some spots in this. Appreciate it. All right, moving on. John. With a couple packs, 32 and 3. 32 should be all the way over here. Thirty-two and three. Thirty-two and three. Good luck. <laughs> We got Robert Butler, gold foil. I don't know if there's any relation to Brett Butler. Lee Smith. Ugeth Urbina. Did Ugeth Urbina have an extra finger on his hand? Does anyone remember that? Or am I thinking of someone else? Who was the sort of closer relief pitcher that had an extra finger? God, exposes Tim Wallach back here. There's Tim Wallach in the league for a while. Coaching somewhere these days. All right, there you go, John. Thank you very much for getting in. All right, now, Josh, you have a ton of packs, so I'm going to save you to the end if you don't mind. I think all of these are Josh's packs. And then after Josh, it should we should be starting with Justin, right? Yeah, there you go. Justin with pack 8 and 17. Ah, it was, you're right. It was Antonio Alfonseca with the extra digit. All right, so Justin with 8 and 17. 
There's 8 and 17. Good luck. And Brett Boone is Joe Random. Go for it. Sean Allerud. Pudger rookie in this? No, I don't think so. Like a 91 for him. Jack McDowell. It's Greg Jeffries. That's a good look right there. I like that. not remember Mariner's edition of Kevin Mitchell, but must be true. There he is. Ken Herbeck, classic uh, donut on his bat. All right, Justin, thank you. All right. Matthew with a couple packs, and then Spear with a couple packs, and we'll do all of Josh's packs. 13 and 1. Thirteen and one. Thirteen and one. Matthew, good luck. Be careful of these. Who knows what hidden treasures could be here? May as well just show you. It's Phil Nevin in his Team USA gear. Joe Girardi. Derek Lowe back here. There's Pat Mahomes. Does he get a boost because of his son?
Howard Johnson like the hotel chain? Hojo, yeah. Here's Pat Mahomes. That's cool. Boom! Yeah, the gold Manny gold foil is nice. Here's Tim Wallet gold foil. Will, Will, what's up? These packs, part of a stash Sean found at the house? Possibly. I don't know. Nick found these somewhere, actually. These are from the Nick Jaspi collection. Nick Jaspi vault? Yep. I bought him, I bought him as a one-year-old. And had it ever since. All right, Matthew, thank you. There are your couple packs. And Spiro with pack seven and ten. Seven and ten. Seven and ten. Good luck. 710 is the uh, AM710 is the name of the ESPN affiliate out here in Los Angeles. If you're into that sort of thing. There's Wally Joyner Royals edition, and here's Will the Thrill, Will Clark. For Spiro. My cousin Dan is a is a lefty. He's got kind of a, a Will Clarkish sort of sort of swing in his playing days. And the final pack for you, Spiro. Good luck. That's uh, it's D Gordon's dad, Tom Flash Gordon. It's Jim Abbott. John Smoltz. We are thrilled. We finally found our dream home in the mountains. You the great, the air is fresh. Luis Ortiz. It is Terry Pendleton. There you go, Spiro. Thank you. All right, now the rest of these will be for Josh. All right, thanks, Josh. All right, so just to double check, Josh should have 18 total packs, right? So here's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And nine, 18. Three, three, three. All right, good luck, Joshua. Thanks for your patience. Just trying to open these. As kids. Back in the day, we just tear these open like nothing, but nowadays you got to be got to be real careful with these. Who knows what can pop out of here?
When's there gonna be the when's the next knuckleballer? Next one. Johnny, what's going on? How are you? And there's Bill Swift. Remember that, uh, I don't really remember it, but remember that Pirates outfield, Andy Van Slyke, Barry Bonds, and it's Bobby Bonilla in that outfield? In the early 90s, Pirates? Is that one of the best outfields of all time? It's got to be up there, right? There's a Mark McGuire, gold foil. Speaking of Bobby Bonilla, there's Bobby Bonilla. Johnny saying Bobby Bonilla worst deal ever is it? I feel like every every year everyone tries to like break down like well with inflation and at the time everyone tries to make those arguments. Is that Trevor Hoffman's rookie card? It might be. And we got Andy Bennis. Eric Houston, I know it's chicken or egg, but I'm trying to see what moves before I buy in. Imagine if everyone was thinking that, Eric. Everyone watching is just sitting around waiting till something moves, then nothing would ever move. Think about it. If everyone thought, I'm going to wait and see what moves, nothing would ever move. Yeah, Gene saying, yeah, that Hoffman is a good hit. There you go. Eric saying, Chris Davis, the worst deal. What about the money the Dodgers gave to Kevin Brown back in the day, the late 90s? That was not a good deal. And who is that... Uh, even worse might have been this deal the Dodgers gave to a Giants free agent. Jason Schmidt, maybe? There's Derek. Derek Bell. All right, yeah, Bobby does get paid. Yeah, that, that is chicken or egg. True, Eric. There's Derek Bell. Yeah, Bobby gets paid every year until he's 72. So it's a, what, a million dollars every year? But a million dollars now, it's still a lot of money. 
a million dollars now isn't really what a million dollars was back in the day. I mean, a million dollars probably... Does, does that is that even that's that's just over league minimum right <laughs> these days oh there's a Mariano Rivera nice Nice mo. And there's Matt Meiske. Gold foil. Might as well just top load all of these two while we're at it. All right, hang on, folks. I know this break is long enough as it is, but I have to go run, grab top loaders. And I guess we'd have to. I, I mean, I really don't have any have any idea. But yeah, one point seven million a year for just sitting at home, even after taxes, right? But I wonder if the Mets even got. There's ways. I think Fangraphs maybe has a way to see what a player's like dollar figure could be based on like their wins above replacement, which you know is flawed. But I mean, it's probably the closest we'll get to try to figure out whether he was even worth that money or not. So you could look it up and be like, did he actually play above the value of his contract? If so, then paying him, just kind of backloading his contract for the next like 80 years or whatever, it's, it's probably not a bad idea. Yeah, Jonah was saying the Nats wanted to try to do that with, uh, with Bryce Harper before he signed with Philly. I guess that works for some teams, but I don't know. If I was an owner, I'd just be like, let's just get it on the books now. I don't want to be paying someone years later, but it must have made sense to the teams at the time. Oh, wow, these cards are sticking together, which is what makes this break take so long. I don't even know how to say his last name. Scott Sapicki? You know, Eric, if you check the schedule, it'll tell you. Just click that link. It's in the chat and drop by Nightbot. Alright, next pack. When was wins above replacement invented? I don't know. Is that a Bill James thing from the 80s or is that a more recent like sort of invention? Or maybe it's a more modern Bill James thing. There's Rhino. Isn't Mark Leiter's kid supposed to be like a number one pick? Or is that Al Leiter's kid? Are they even related? I don't know. All these old school guys here. There's Robin Ventura. There's Greg Swindell.
Maybe it's Outlier's kid. Yeah, but is that... Is that Mark Leiter's kid or is it Al Leiter's kid? Are Mark and Al even related? I don't know. So behind Greg Hibbard is Rick Green. Al Leiter's kid, got it. Look at Ryan Long. It's more more like a yearbook picture. All right, next stack. Aha, Mark and Al are brothers. So I just, I can just have these cards here. So Mark's nephew. Al's son. Jack Leiter is probably going to be one of the top five picks in the draft, MLB draft, which is in a couple of weeks. So then we'll get a good idea of who we're going to see in Bowman draft later this year. Nice Joe Carter. Oh, and there's a Manny Ramirez. Nice. Look how cool he looks. All right, almost there. Let's keep it going. So the, all of these packs are for Josh. That's Jeffrey Hammonds. And there's a Mike Piazza. Nice. Rookie car, Mike Piazza. Hey, see you, Jesse. <laughs> Giant bat is always a funny one. Gold, Jim Olander. By the way, Jason Tatum, the first Boston Celtic to score 90 points in consecutive playoff games. Think about Boston's great playoff history. Uh, no one's gone the 50-40 like Tatum had. Jason Tatum also the third youngest player in NBA history to score 50 in the playoffs. Behind Rick Barry and Michael Jordan. 
been an historic run for him. And it's been a familiar run for Tatum as well. He has had some monster games, including a couple of 50-point games against the uh, Spurs. Is that the old Bermanism? Chris Bermanism? Mike Pepperoni Piazza? Alright, we got a Charles Nagy. It's pretty good in his time, right? Chuck Nagy? Is that right? Jonah saying P Piazza grew pizza. Piazza grew up uh, in the town next to you when his nephew teaches at Middle school. At your forum, middle school. It's Jeff Shaw. Jeff Shaw, if I remember, was part of the trade that sent someone to the Reds or something like that. It was a bad trade for the Dodgers. It was an okay trick. I think Jeff Shaw was on the Reds and the Dodgers traded Paul Canerco. Uh, yes, Thomas, I need you to check out. I read this in the in the, uh, the, the old newspaper the other day. <laughs> um, I read this online. There's a dude that has a knuckleball school near like LAX. What? We should all go and see who can throw a good knuckleball. Like if. Because if your regular pigeon thing doesn't work out, you could be an expert sit, knuckleballer. Sit on a knuckleball mm -hmm. the whole life. Mm -hmm. You play forever. Play until you're like 50. No, much better than that. Yeah. In the show, until you're 50, just throwing a knuckler. <laughs> so we're going to have to check that out someday. Yeah, I read an article, folks, where there was just... There's just... I don't think there's a single knuckleballer in the majors right now. Maybe not even in the minors. There's great catcher Charles Johnson. And apparently there is a knuckleball academy maybe just maybe 15, 20 minutes north of us. And I was just like, hey, knuckleball, easy on the arm. It's not going to, you know, uh, even though I'm probably past my athletic prime, I might be in my athletic prime. Uh, if I could learn how to throw a knuckleball, but I would love to give that a shot. But apparently it's... <laughs> You know, stating the overstating the obvious. Apparently, it's really hard. <laughs> stating the obvious, but apparently, it's really hard. They said they could take probably a hundred like big league pitchers, and the article, the, whoever the article was quoting, said there you can take a hundred big league pitchers. Maybe ten could throw a decent knuckleball, and maybe fewer than that could probably throw it consistently enough to actually make it their main pitch. Is Chris Rock. What happened? Jerry is saying, sad what happened to Tim Wakefield. Re refresh my memory. I think on Netflix, there's still a great knuckleball documentary. If people want to check that out. Josh Edlitz, last three packs. I think there's a, there's a good documentary on the fastball and the knuckleball. But we could use, like, we, we, we are in an era of of 100 mile per hour fastballs, you know, just ungodly sliders and curveballs boosted by, you know, boosted by extreme spin rates, the likes of which we have not seen ever. Imagine if a, if like, it would be a great story if there's like a knuckleballer that comes out of nowhere. And just dominates the league. Solomon Torres gold. People are saying that, you know, a lot of for whatever baseball scouts or experts or whatever are saying that, listen, a lot of hitters can probably time a 100 mile per hour fastball at some point, you know? 
So they, the hitters can get into a rhythm rhythm and just tee off on pitchers, right? So there's Oral Hershiser, nice. But now I think pitchers will have to start. That's why you're seeing more off-speed pitches first. You know, like like people are starting to pitch quote unquote backwards now. They're starting with the breaking ball first to get strikes, and so you have to start doing things to keep hit hitters off rhythm. You might even see like stuff that Johnny Cueto does, you know, and you can start seeing more hesitations in in uh, in windups and whatnot. And what and what's more disrupting to a hitter, hitter's rhythm than the knuckleball? Bring the knuckleball back. Yeah, Johnny saying as a Nationals fan used to hate it when you had to see uh, R.A. Dickey. I think R.A. Dickey may may have been one of the last great knuckleballers of uh, of the last X what ten fifteen years. It's Barry Larkin, Hall of Famer. Rock Reigns, David Justice, and the final pack. We made it, folks. Thanks for hanging with me throughout this. Uh, ended up being an hour-long break, so that's something to <laughs> something to think about when we do the, another one of these. But it was a lot of fun diving into the past here. Go back down memory lane. All right. Robin Yao. There's Ramon Martinez, Pedro's brother. Oh, and look at this. A nice gold foil. Is that our second one out of this box? Manny Ramirez. I think we had one for someone else a little bit earlier. I'm not sure what these are going for these days. Most likely you'll have to get them uh, them graded to get a nice uh, get a nice return. Billy Rukin, of course, has a classic baseball card. Um, most likely you'll have to get them graded, but if they grade out nice, nine or a ten, you know, I'm sure you're looking at some uh, a great return. And there's Tim Salmon, classic right there. Josh Edlitz, thank you very much. Thank you, everyone. I'm Joe for jazbeescasebreaks.com. That was a blast from the past. That was 1992. Bowman Baseball, one box, random pack break, number one. There's more in the store, jazbeescasebreaks.com. I'll see you next time for the next one. Bye-bye.